I'm Yasmin Nazari and I'm 26 years old. I was brought up in Scotland and I started Muay Thai when I was 22 years old. Um, I had my first interclub and then two months later I fought on Smash Muay Thai against Claire Bowler um, for my first fight. It was a great experience, um, it was amazing actually, it's a brilliant show. Um, there was smoke, flames, cameramen, everything, it was pretty huge for a first fight and it was a bit intimidating but I loved it and that's what put me on the path to continue doing Muay Thai. Um, originally from that, all I did was work in a department store and um, basically save my money to go out on the weekend and get drunk. Um, end up in arguments, end up in fights, it just wasn't the right way to live but unfortunately that's how I thought life was meant to be. Work to go out at the weekends and that's all we all did really. Um, until I found Muay Thai and then everything changed. It changed my whole view, it changed my ambitions, it made me believe that I could do more, it made me want to do more, it made me want to go to more places which then led to me deciding that I was going to pack everything in and come out to Thailand in 2016 and um, that's when I really kind of jumped feet first. I got all my stuff together, went to a car boot sale and um, sold everything that I possibly could apart from my car at that point. Um, but recently, uh, just at the end of last year there, I did sell my car also because I'm um, on this path, this is where I want to be, I want to be in Thailand. Um, the whole point is, is to extend my knowledge, to extend my experience, to make me become one of the world's best fighters. So when I first got to Thailand, um, I called up uh, Owen from Fight Lab because I'd originally been here a couple times before but I met him in my last visit and he'd mentioned about doing a sponsorship. So I called him and asked if there was still an opportunity to do so. Um, he said yes, which was brilliant. And he hooked me up with gear, clothing, and everything basically that I needed. And also he was very good at pushing um, my fights. So when I put posts up, he would share it on the Fight Lab page, which got me more followers, which was brilliant. So from that, I then went and started training at Top Team, or Piquet Top Team, sorry, um, which was great. But it's a very westernized gym and training was good and everything but unfortunately there was no fights. I was there for nine months, only fought three times and I fought once in the UK which I organized myself. Um, if you're living in Thailand, that's just not enough to survive on. I was staying in an 8,000 baht uh, apartment in the beginning with a pool and everything. Then I had to reduce down to five and then eventually down to two and that was just based on my means of what I was earning. I wasn't earning enough to be paying 8,000 baht per month. Um, so I changed gyms and I went to Eagle Muay Thai. Eagle was fantastic, they were really good, I was getting a lot of uh, fights from them. I managed to get myself a fight in China while I was um, training with them. And that was brilliant because they were really good at helping me cut weight and then get me ready to go off to China. Uh, I went to China and it was huge. There was a huge catwalk I had to walk them down with someone behind me waving my flag. And there was about 10,000 people sitting there watching me. Um, it was just, oh, it was, it was my dream. Like my dreams were coming true. I was really doing what I wanted to do in my Muay Thai career. But from then, I wanted to try another gym. Um, my friend had a gym called Nakamoi Thai, and I hadn't yet tried it out. And I was a bit unsure because there's only him and one other trainer. He fights full time, and the trainer who's Thai also fights quite regularly. But I decided, right, okay, let's let's go for it and experience it. And it was the best thing that I did because he had me fighting two times a month. I was eating with them. They probably like joined me in with the family, and I had the experience of just going to the temples with them, doing the Buddha days with them. They'd have the monks come down to the gym. It was just brilliant, like really good. As much as it was tiny and there was only three of us most of the time, um, it was great. And we'd have the, the odd foreigners come into training and they'd bring their experiences. It was a really good experience and I got the fights that I wanted through it. Um, 
I also had a great experience of just learning how to live Thai style. Like, if I had no money, then they would feed me. And if they needed some money, well, needed some food, maybe not some money, but needed some food, I would give them food back. Like, we would work together, give and take from each other. Like, I, I learned how it was to be, like, in a small community and live the Thai way. And it really changed my opinion and view on life and it really made me grow also so coming up to my fight um it's different here in thailand we meet at the gym say seven o'clock then they make sure you've got your monko your hand wraps your vaseline uh, ice bucket mouth guard everything and then we all pile into the truck um, most of the time sitting in the back uh, as we drive from Kata to Patong, just watching everything through the back window. Trying to focus on my fight, but the guys are always trying to have a laugh and take your mind off it, but you never can, not really. You get to the stadium and you're kind of looking out for your opponent because as much as there is a poster and you see yourself and another girl there, doesn't mean that's actually who you're fighting. And there's not a weigh-in, so the weight's basically free-for-all. If you look about the same size, same height, then that will do. And especially if someone's pulled out on the day of your fight, then you're fighting anyone. So mindset has to be solid. You can't think about who you're fighting about, if, who you're fighting. You just got to think about the fight, getting in there, performing everything that you've practiced, getting that done well. And so when you're warming up, it's completely different from what the UK is. You get oiled down and uh, hand wraps and you do a little bit of a shadow, but you're in an open room where your opponent can see you and everyone else is there as well. You don't want to show too much. You don't want to show what you're going to do in the ring. Um, this is just different from what it is in the UK. In the UK, you're normally in two separate rooms, but Thailand, it's you all together. Then, as a female, when you're coming out to the ring, you're not allowed to have your monko on until you get into the ring because you have to go underneath the bottom rope. You're not allowed to go over the ropes. Um, they then put the monko on and you have to bow to uh, the judges and then to the referee in the ring. Back to your corner and then we do our Y crew. And in England also, when you're doing your Y crew, the uh, Ram Y would be played on a CD. Here in Thailand, it's live. It's, it makes you have goosebumps, really. It's actually re a really nice feeling. I like it. But once that's all done, they check your gloves, they check your mouth guard, they check your feet, and you're ready to go. Bravo. UK, I was ranked number five in the UK rankings. Um, I'm currently ranked number eight, and that's just through not fighting that often in the UK. I've been away for two years and I've only fought three times, so it's understandable for you to drop. Um, but I have just uh, confirmed a big fight for August 4th against Amy Parney, which is huge. It's uh, she's a great fighter. Uh, I've been out here in Thailand now, built up my knowledge, built up my experience, and I'm at that level now that this fight is going to be one of the best. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo.
My next fight is against UK number one in Scotland and I will be doing my fight camp at AKA Thailand. Owen from Fight Lab actually contacted Mark, the manager, and organized the meeting and we met up at the facilities and he was really intrigued about the fight. I told him that it was potentially for the number one spot and I had two months to get in shape. So he showed me around um, the area, showed me the Muay Thai, showed me where they do the yoga, the aerodyne, the strength and conditioning, and I was sold. Their facilities are amazing and I'm really lucky to be on board with them. Two weeks ago, Owen from Fight Lab uh, called us up and said that Yasmin, the number five ranked girl in England, uh, is fighting the number one ranked girl in England and um, needed a great gym to do her fight camp at. And he knows that we have a bunch of sparring partners, foreign as well as Thai, uh, all shapes, sizes. So uh, we're 100% confident that she will be prepared. Uh, I mean, she's shown up every day. She trains hard. She's helped out the other students. It's been an absolute pleasure to have her here. When I look back on my life and I think about the advice I could give someone else in my position, I think it starts with a question and then comes a goal. And with that comes many different possibilities. But the road's not always easy. There's some hard lessons, but you've got to help yourself. You've got to show courage. You've got to learn from your lessons. You've got to give passion, show commitment, and keep pushing forward. Learn from others' mistakes and find the way around. Because in the end, it's all worth it for you to live your dream.